So we've taken a look at Betaflight and iNav for a quad like this. This has a GPS unit on top with a magnetometer and this flight controller has a barometer. But what happens if you have something like this? This is a GEP RC Baby Croc 5. This only has a GPS unit. No barometer, no magnetometer. How well does Betaflight and iNav do with that? And what do you need to do in the software to make it work with this? Because there is some things you need to change in the CLI to make both softwares work with this and is it even worth it does it even work well so in this video we're going to check it out okay so as to not bury the lead the first thing you need to do if you want to set this up is make sure in beta flight you go to the cli and if you don't have a magnetometer so you can see what i have up here you have to type in get mag and then you'll see this variable here this position hold without mag that default is off so you need to change that to on so we go ahead and copy this we type in set type that in there and then it would be off you need to change that to on type that in hit type in save and hit enter once that reboots the other thing you need to do is make sure in modes and don't make this mistake because you'll see in the video coming up here that i made this mistake is you have to have your altitude hold and position hold so in beta flight when you activate position hold that does not mean it activates altitude hold so if you want it to hold x y and z elevation you have to have this span both so you can't do this and have like okay we're going to do altitude hold, hold here with this channel and then position hold here which will and it, it's just different so you have to do altitude hold and position hold on the same switch you can see aux 4 so when aux 4 goes to the high position it's going to activate both of these at the same time for me that is not how inav works in inav if you activate position hold it automatically activates altitude hold so you don't have to have two things that span the same thing so just know the difference between the two firmwares in inav you also need to go into the cli but the variable that you need to change is different here so in inav they're not so worried about the magnetometer they're worried more about the barometer so we have to type in get barrow and what we want to switch here is this inav use gps no barrow and we want to change that from off to on so we type in set paste that in type that on type in save and hit enter there as well. As I mentioned before in INAV, your altitude hold and position hold do not need to overlap. So you can see here I have position hold uh, here and altitude hold here. And I don't have to overlap this. It doesn't hurt if you do, but you don't need to do it. It's gonna do it by default. Now in either firmware, it's gonna detect if you don't have those magnetometer or barometer. And in some cases, if you do have a barometer or you do have a magnetometer, but you just don't wanna use them because you don't have to wanna deal with calibrating the magnetometer and barometer, um, some, I could argue that the barometer throws in, depending on the wind and the scenario of what your barometer has, it actually might make things worse than uh, just taking it from the GPS altitude only. So it's something you can play with, but you can set those to none in the configuration tab in both firmwares if you don't, if you have it on board, but you don't wanna use it. And then both firmwares will automatically uh, switch to using their modes without you know the, those two pieces of equipment. Obviously for GPS position hold and altitude hold kind of stuff, you at least have to have a GPS unit. Uh, for that. So you, you will need that. And a lot of these little quads, these little explorers don't have barometers and magnetometers. So let's see how it does without uh, those two pieces of those two sensors uh, in Betaflight and in INAV. All right, let's see how she does here. So you can see just took off and my HDOP is not great. So let's see what she does with position hold with that HDOP and you can see here now it's not so bad so let's keep on going let's move forward a little bit here let's do, do a kind of a moving position hold mm, there it's okay yeah that was fine that was fine that was fine so HDOP there, 2.7, not great, only seven satellites, but crystal clear, beautiful day, and uh, she's doing all right. Now do notice here, again, we don't have any barometer or any of that. We're just a GPS unit with no magnetometer. So let's just put this in the altitude hold 
And notice there on the upper left of my screen the throttle percentages for just holding altitude. Uh, and let's see how that works. Now I'm going to go ahead and go forward. Let's go over here so I don't bother anybody. And just see how that, um, all I'm doing is pressing forward on the sticks. And notice how that throttle percent is raising all by itself, right? I'm not doing that. I have not moved the throttle. I'm just going to go ahead and do a sweeping turn here so I don't go too far away. And you can see how that altitude hold is doing its function, right? We're getting an altitude hold, almost 50% throttle now. And that's just with the GPS unit. So not too bad, huh? You can really see it there. And I can actually hear it here. So let's go in a position hold now, see what I get. Throttle immediately drops down. And you can see what you get behavior there for INAV. So INAV uh, working pretty well here today. Let's see how INAV does with the whole panic button scenario. And see how that does. That seemed like it worked all right. 15 satellites, HGOP of one. Let's do it again. And here's a little different with INAV. You gotta, it doesn't have that throttle drop. And see how she does here. Did all right. Now I'm trying to keep my throttle, half throttle here. Um, see now, uh, I don't know, man, I guess. Looks like it's holding, it just uh, nosed up a little bit more than I'm used to seeing. Usually see the ground there a little bit more, but it looks like it's not moving backwards or anything of that nature. Let's try it again. Get a little closer here to the ground. And raise up to half throttle, just so I don't start dropping in elevation. It seems like it's working pretty well. Um, let's give it another, let's give it a little, let's give it a little bit of beans with, you know, again, no magnetometer here. Do a little sideways flight. So given a little bit, you know, trying to confuse it, it's calorie, you know, um, compass heading, and you can see it uh, does pretty well there. So even INAV here with a little bit of the panic button scenario uh, works pretty well. Let's do this, some more. Let's try one last thing here with uh, just sideways flight for a long time. So sideways flight intentionally trying to kind of confuse the uh, compass. I went sideways for a good long time. Flip it in the position hold, let's see what we get. Working pretty good. The big thing with iNav is, though, you got to remember to raise that throttle back up, because if I go to zero throttle, it just starts dropping down. So Betaflight has that kind of that dead band at the bottom, where iNav does not have that. Um, so when you're, if you're, <laughs> If you're doing a move and you hit the panic button, um, that's kind of nice with Betaflight has that dead band at the bottom here. So it, cause obviously when you're inverted or doing a lot of uh, acro moves, you're typically at 0% throttle. So you don't have to kind of worry about that part. Uh, you can see with INAP here that that is. And so let's just uh, get up in altitude here a little bit more. You can see that nice steady raise that it does there. And I'll just do a little flying with uh, just straightforward flight in position hold, almost like a DJI kind of scenario. And you can see here uh, what we're getting. And then uh, obviously just letting go of the sticks. It kind of course corrects there or tries to, to stop itself. The big difference with iNav, and I'll show you that here in a little bit, is with cruise mode and we'll do a whole uh, I, I think I'll probably do a separate video on the cruise mode and how that works uh, versus uh, attitude so beta flight just has attitude adjustment for when you're flying kind of like this where INAV has a cruise mode 
where it's not just based on attitude, it's just uh, tilting the quad forward and backwards manually. It's basically like angle mode, and then when you let go, it just locks into a position. All right, let's see what Betaflight does here. You can see I got a great amount of satellites in HTOP. Let's throw that into position hold, and it does its thing. Now, obviously, you notice the weather has taken a trend for the worst here, so uh, quite a bit windier, so don't mind the shakes and shimmies. Uh, but you can see how that's working, uh, and it's working just fine as before. Uh, we can do crazy moves to throw off the, the compass and then throw it in the position hold and it's still gonna get me where I wanna be for position hold as it's raining here. Uh, so that's, that's working fine. The altitude hold though is questionable, I think. Um, it could be just my sticks here. Cause now it's dropping down. So that dead band I might have a little tight. Yeah, it might be that. I set that to zero. Oop, it's dropping good. So it doesn't seem like it's hitting the altitude hold. Yeah, so it's not hitting altitude hold here in position hold. I guess, um, I think I need to make that adjustment. So altitude hold position hold that's right so in beta flight I actually need to make that adjustment uh, in beta flight you have to have altitude hold and position hold both on the same um, like area at the same time so ignore the altitude hold while I'm in position but if I can just snap it back out of and just I'll just work to hold my altitude here then you can see uh, the kind of locking I'm getting. As before in the other video, uh, even with doing more dynamic moves, you know, in beta flight, and I gotta manually adjust my altitude here, but uh, you can see that I, you know, it will act as a panic button before here, even in this super windy, turbulent uh, environment. So, you know, beta flight uh, definitely works well with position hold, uh, even without a, um, even without a uh, magnetometer or uh, or a barometer for uh, altitude hold and position hold. And you can see position hold here again. I gotta do my thing altitude wise here. So let's just check out altitude hold because I think you know we kind of beat up position hold quite a bit. Now one big difference is in beta flight when I'm in altitude hold now, which I am now, so now you should see that altitude hold tight and then you're gonna see those RPMs changing down in the lower left there. And as I move around here um, and change my, my position, you're gonna see it trying to hold that altitude. So even if I you know, hold steady here, it's gonna hold that altitude for me gonna adjust those, it's gonna stay around the 60 number. Uh, and then if I go ahead and turn and then just get into it with full forward, you're seeing those RPMs rev up and uh, what it needs to do there. Although my, it's interesting, the altimeter, uh, you're seeing it's fluctuating more. It's probably because of the barrow that, or no, it's not the barrow. I don't, you know, it does, this thing doesn't even have a barometer. It's interesting that it's doing that so that that goes way down you can see that the general altitude is holding pretty well uh, i think for just the gps unit alone and uh it's not doing too bad you know i'm not having to adjust altitude and it's it's holding in this super <laughs> crappy weather right here all right i gotta bring it back in my battery's getting pretty low but uh yeah, uh, beta flight does well without a barometer or a magnetometer, and so does iNav. So what do you think? I think it works pretty dang well in both firmwares. They're pretty much at parity with each other for how well it works without having all those sensors. I almost feel like, to some extent, 
I don't know. It's a lot simpler with not dealing with a magnetometer and have to deal with calibration and the just, and same thing with a barometer. Like it, if, if you don't get a good uh, lock and a position hold with just only a GPS unit, it's not like, oh, is it my magnetometer calibration or, or my altitude hold it? Oh, is it, is it my barometer or is it my GPS unit that's feeding it back? You just know it's the GPS. It's got to be, the, it's the only sensor you're using. So teach their own, check it out. If you are interested in seeing what some of the additional features are that I alluded to, the cruise mode that iNav has versus Betaflight, go ahead and hit the subscribe link down below, or I will link that video at the end of this video once I have it done. Thanks everybody. Drop any questions you have down below, and I hope this helped.